Hey guys, this is Neha and once again welcome back to my channel about technology. In this tutorial we'll be discussing about preemptive and non-preemptive scheduling. Well, a perfect scheduling ensures that a process executes efficiently and have a reduced waiting time. We'll see how preemptive and non-preemptive scheduling work to achieve these goals and how they differ from each other. So let's get started. Before getting into the details of what preemptive and non-preemptive scheduling is, let us discuss why there is a need of scheduling. Well, we don't want our CPU to sit idle. Instead, it must be processing something continuously in order to achieve efficient CPU utilization. So whenever a CPU is idle, operating system must select a process from ready queue that is ready for execution and allocate CPU cycle to that process. Now this task of selecting a process from ready queue is done by CPU scheduler. After learning why scheduling is required, let us discuss about the scenario when the scheduling is required. Well, CPU scheduling takes place under four circumstances. When a process switches from a running state to a waiting state, from a running state to a ready state, or from a waiting state to a ready state, or when the process finally gets terminated. In the first and the fourth scenario, the CPU scheduler doesn't have a choice. It simply has to select a new process from a ready queue and allocate CPU to it for execution. However, in the second and the third scenario, CPU scheduler can choose which process it can schedule, a new process from a ready queue or the process whose burst time is still remaining. Now let us talk about preemptive scheduling. Preemptive scheduling occurs under two circumstances. When a process switches from running state to a ready state, or when a process switches from waiting state to a ready state. In preemptive scheduling, the process in ready queue is allotted CPU for a limited time period. And if it terminates in that time period, then it is absolutely fine. Else, if its burst time is still remaining, then it is placed back again in the ready queue and the process stays in the ready queue till it gets next chance for execution. Now, in preemptive scheduling, if the process with high priority arrives in the ready queue, the operating system prempts or interrupts the execution of current running process. It places the current process back in the ready queue and provides CPU to the process with high priority. In this way, preemptive scheduling reduces the average waiting time of the processes and makes the scheduling flexible. But along with this flexibility, preemptive scheduling gets an overhead of switching the processes frequently from running state to ready state or from ready state to running state. The examples of preemptive scheduling are round robin, shortest remaining job first and priority scheduling. Let us discuss preemptive scheduling with an example of shortest remaining job first. We have four processes, process P0, P1, P2 and P3, out of which process P2 arrives at time 0. So, CPU is allocated to process P2 as there is no other process in ready queue at time 0. Meanwhile, P2 was executing, P3 arrives at time 1. Now, the remaining time for process P2 is 5 milliseconds, which is larger than the time required by process P3, that is 4 milliseconds. So, CPU is allocated to process P3. As P3 was executing, process P1 arrives at time 2. Now the remaining time for P3 is 3 milliseconds, which is less than the time required by process P1 that is 4 milliseconds and process P2 that is 5 milliseconds. So P3 is allowed to continue. While P3 is continuing, process P0 arrives at time 3. Now the time remaining for P3 is 2 milliseconds, which is equal to the time required by process P0 that is equals to 2 milliseconds. So P3 continues and after P3 terminates, the CPU is allocated to process P0 as it has less burst time as compared to others. After P0 terminates, the CPU is allocated to process P1 and after that to P2. Now let us move on to non-primitive scheduling. Non-primitive scheduling occurs under two circumstances when the process switches from running state to the waiting state or when the process terminates completely. In non-primitive scheduling, once the CPU is allocated to a process, the process releases CPU only when it gets terminated or it enters a waiting state, let's say for an I.O. operation. So this kind of scheduling increases the waiting time of the processes and makes the scheduling rigid one. As if the process with high priority arrives, the currently executing process is not interrupted. The example of non-primitive scheduling are first come first serve and shortest job first. Now let us have a quick review of its example. Let us discuss non-primitive scheduling with an example of first come first serve. 
Let's say again we have four processes, process P0, P1, P2 and P3. Now process P2 has arrived at ready queue at time 0. So CPU is allocated to process P2 and it will take 6 millisecond to get executed completely. In between this duration, all the other processes that is P0, P1 and P3 arrives at ready queue. Now, as it is a non-primitive scheduling, process P2 is not interrupted, no matter what processes arrived at the ready queue. Once P2 complete its burst time, then on the basis of first come first serve, CPU is allocated to process P3, then to process P1 and then to process P0. Now let us talk about the differences between primitive and non-primitive scheduling. In primitive scheduling, CPU is allocated to a process for a limited amount of time. In non-primitive scheduling, CPU is allocated to a process till it completes its CPU burst time or it enters into a waiting state. In primitive scheduling, process can be interrupted in between its execution if the process with high priority arrives into the ready queue. In non-primitive scheduling, process cannot be interrupted in between its execution even if the process with higher priority arrives into the ready queue. In primitive scheduling, if the process with higher priority frequently arrives into the ready queue, then the process with low priority have to wait for a long and it may have to starve. On the other hand, in non-primitive scheduling, if CPU is allocated to a process with larger burst time, then process with smaller burst time may have to starve. Primitive scheduling has overhead of switching the process from ready state to running state and vice versa. On the other hand, non-primitive scheduling has no overhead of switching the processes from running state to ready state. Primitive scheduling is quite flexible because the critical processes are allowed to access CPU as they arrive into the ready queue, no matter what process is executing currently. Non-primitive scheduling is rigid as even if the critical process enters into the ready queue, the currently running process is not interrupted in between its execution. The primitive scheduling is cost associative as it has to maintain the integrity of shared data which is not in the case of non-primitive scheduling. The examples of primitive scheduling are round robin, priority scheduling, shortest remaining job first and the examples of non-primitive scheduling are first come first serve, shortest job first. For more details, you can refer our official website techdifferences.com. I had provided URL for the same in the description below. Please like and share this video with your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel about technology. Keep checking the channel for further updates and put your comment and queries in the section below. We'll be back again soon with a new video. Till then, take a good care of yourself.